Hi everyone. Well, I thought I'd give you a little update on what I've been finding out about the crisis in Japan, including the meltdown of the nuclear reactor at Fukushima. Okay, over here, you know, our media is kind of not making an issue of it, like playing down the threat of radiation coming over here. Now, I don't know how serious the threat of radiation coming here actually is at this time, but there's a couple of things to consider. One, according to the maps, it would spread over the ocean and reach the west coast of Canada and uh, the U.S. So the radiation would be drifting over this way. How bad is it going to be? Here's one scenario. They have a meltdown at a nuclear reactor, and it's like a, you know, a Chernobyl or something like that. Radiation goes out to sea, disperses, we're hit by maybe mild radiation on the west coast, and that's it, although Japan would be much more seriously affected. Scenario number two, the spent fuel rods that are at Fukushima turn out to be more of a problem than the meltdown of the reactor itself. That is the big concern. You can see this article by Kirk James Murphy on the significance of the spent fuel rods and the implication of the disaster for America. I did a little summary of this on my blog and I'll just read it to you. Um, at the Fukushima plant that suffered damage during the March 11th earthquake and tsunami and explosions in the days after, Tokyo Electric is struggling to keep spent fuel rods cooled in pools of water. While most of the media attention is on the reactor itself, the spent fuel rods pose an even greater risk as failure to keep adequate water levels could lead to catastrophic fire. These are radioactive rods. Some of them involve a material called MOX, which is even more dangerous than the usual uranium, and some are plutonium. According to Arnie Gunderson, a nuclear engineer at Fairwinds Associates and a member of the public oversight panel for the Vermont Yankee nuclear plant, which is identical to the Fukushima Daiichi Unit 1, the result of such a fire with the spent fuel rods would be, quote, like a Chernobyl on steroids. So, people, this isn't over yet, and Let's just hope those fuel rods don't catch on fire. And if you want to know the truth about radiation levels in your area, don't wait for the government and the media to tell you. Go to radiationnetwork.com and you can see this map where you'll see uh, what the actual radiation levels are in various parts of the U.S. And at this time, they seem to be within normal range, so let's hope it stays that way. Although, although our media here is trying to play down this threat, like, no, nah, no, nah, it happened over there in Japan, nothing to worry about, folks. But, you know, word is getting out through the alternative media. So demand for potassium iodide is just going through the roof all over the U.S. and Canada, well, on the West Coast anyway, to the point where the governments are feeling compelled to address this and, and tell people, stop buying it. It's not going to save you and it might be dangerous. I th they're probably right that, you know, if there really was this major rea uh, radiation coming over here, the, you know, potassium iodide is not going to save you. But the point is that people are aware and they're all running out to buy this stuff. So they're obviously not believing the media, which are telling us that, you know, it's not under control in Japan, but, you know, don't worry about it. It's not going to affect you here. People are just not believing it. Now, I live in Montreal, which is, you know, all the way on the other side of Canada, on the East Coast, and uh, would probably be the last, you know, to be hit with the radiation cloud coming from the West. But I thought I'd just go and check you know, the potassium iodide at the pharmacy. I happened to notice the other day, you know, before this happened, strangely, I was walking through the aisle where they have all these, you know, things that the kitchen witches use, like, you know, the Epsom salts and the almond oil and all these things. And I happened to notice that they had iodine. Iodide? Hmm. And I took note of that. Yeah, that's for, you know, prevention of thyroid cancer after radiation exposure. And that was it. I didn't buy any. So I thought, well, let me go check. Are people buying this stuff? And surprise, surprise, nearly that whole section was cleared out. There were two little bottles left. The formulation they had, though, was iodine 5% and iod potassium iodide 3.3%. So it's not exactly just potassium iodide. And I really don't know whether you should be ingesting that at all. It does say poison on the label. So I went to ask the pharmacist, do you have potassium iodide? And they were like, potassium what? 
you know, like they'd never heard of it. I said, yeah, you know, potassium iodide pills, you know, prevent thyroid cancer, you know, Japan, nuclear reactor, people worried. Uh, and he's like, oh, let me, uh, let me go check. So I went, he went, I went to sit down while he went and Googled it. <laughs> anyway, he went and Googled it, came back, basically told me what I'd found out from Google just before I went there. So after he'd Googled it, the pharmacist got back to me and said, well, you know, I, I wouldn't worry too much about stocking up on that now because you really don't need it. And if there really was a nuclear emergency here, I'm sure the government would take care of you. They'd probably be, you know, handing this stuff out. And I thought, somebody please get this guy a red pill. The government's not going to save you. When things like that happen, the system breaks down. I mean, look at what's going on in Japan. People are without food and water, waiting f for hours to line up to buy some food, and then they're only allowed to buy, you know, five items in the, in the affected regions, not in Tokyo, where business seems to be going on as usual for now. But in, in, a, in a catastrophe, I wouldn't count on the government. I mean, as it is right now, we got people dying in hallways here in the hospitals because our hospitals are overloaded. We got people being sent from one hospital to the other and back to the first and dying in the process. So can you imagine if there was a real catastrophe here? I don't think potassium iodide would save you, but I don't think the government would be doing it either. And I, I think you'd have to kind of do your own research to find out what you could do to, you know, protect yourself from radiation and to see to it that maybe you don't starve, assuming that your house hasn't been demolished with all your supplies in it. I don't always have time to vlog, but in between I do collect information and I tend to post it on my blog. Well, here's an article that I did about uh, Fukushima could be like Chernobyl on steroids. And embedded in it is this video from Scott from Believers Underground about nuclear fallout and the concern about the fuel rods. So yeah, uh, this is far from over. And let's just hope that those uh, fuel rods don't catch on fire, because if they do, God help us all. Uh, well, thanks for listening to me, and I'll see you next time.